20 years ago, Ethernet was understood as local network since its longest distance was less than 2 miles. Nowadays, as IEEE improves Ethernet standard that supports the distance of over 30 miles, which makes Ethernet usable for one, let's look into Ethernet One service today. In this video, we will talk about the following topics. First of all, we will give a brief introduction about Ethernet One service. Then we'll talk about the common names for Ethernet One. After that, we will go into IP routing over Ethernet One. Finally, we will sum up our video with the keynotes. Let's now look into this diagram. It is a typical Ethernet One that connects two locations of a customer. As you can see, when offering Ethernet One service, here are the responsibilities of the service provider. First of all, they need to provide customers with a fiber Ethernet access link that connects from customer's router to their point of presence. Basically, the point of presence or fiber switches. Then they need to implement technologies of their choice to create the Ethernet One service between the point of presence. With Ethernet One service, customer can use Ethernet as layer two protocol to connect to any location in their network regarding the distance between the two locations. As a network engineer, you need to know the behaviors of the Ethernet One service. Logically, it behaves like a point-to-point -point connection between your routers. Physically, it behaves as if the fiber Ethernet access link connected to your router directly. As you may know, Ethernet One has several common names. First of all, they usually call it Ethernet One. It is a generic name to differentiate it from the traditional Ethernet LAN. They also refer to it as Ethernet Line Service or E-Line, a term from the Metro Ethernet Forum for the kind of point-to-point -point Ethernet One service. Then they talk about Ethernet Emulation a term emphasizing that the link is not a literal Ethernet link from end to end. The more popular name is Ethernet over MPoS, a term that refers to multi-protocol label switching MPoS, a technology that can be used to create Ethernet service for the customer. Let's look into IP routing in Ethernet One by analyzing how PC One sends an IP packet carrying ICMP segment to Server One in this diagram. First of all, PC One's network layer determines Server One is in a different subnet. It has to forward the packet to the gateway with the IP 10.0.1.10. PC1 then start the ARP process to find the MAC address associated with the gateway IP and it find the MAC address of the interface G11 of Router1. To send the packet across Ethernet network, PC1 encapsulates the IP packet in an Ethernet frame that has the destination MAC address of the interface G11 of Router1. Let's work together to construct the Ethernet frame. As you know, the Ethernet frame contains the header, the data, and the trailer. The header has a preamble, which determines the start of the frame, the source MAC address, the destination MAC address, and the type of data. The trailer contains the frame check sequence to verify the integrity of the frame. The data is IP packet, which has the source IP, the destination IP, 
the protocol to determine the service in the upper layer and other metadata. Let's now put the information from the diagram into the frame. In this diagram, the sole MAC address is the MAC address of PC1's network interface. The destination MAC address is the MAC address of the interface G11 on router 1. The type is IP version 4. The sole IP address is the IP address of PC1. The destination IP address is the IP address of server 1. And the protocol is 14 ICMP. Upon receiving the Ethernet frame, Router 1 performs the following actions. First, it de encapsulates the IP packet from the Ethernet frame. Next, it reads the IP packet and searches in its routing table to find the route containing the destination IP. Assume it finds the route with the instruction to forward the packet out via the interface G10 to the next hop IP 10.0.0.2. It then encapsulates the IP into a new Ethernet frame as below. It finally forwards the frame to the router 2 for further processing. Like router 1, router 2 performs the following actions to process the Ethernet frame. First, it de-encapsulates the IP packet from the Ethernet frame. It repeats the same process as router 1 and finds the destination attached to its G21 interface. After that, it encapsulates the IP packet into a new Ethernet frame as below. Finally, it forwards the frame to server 1 for consuming the data which ends the routing process. Let's sum up our video with the keynotes. Ethernet 1 is the next generation 1 service with several common names. Ethernet 1, Ethernet Line Service or E-Line, Ethernet Emulation, and Ethernet over MPoS. It is up to the service providers to choose the technologies to implement Ethernet 1. As a network engineer, you need to know the behaviors of Ethernet 1. Logically, it behaves like a point-to-point -point connection between your routers. Physically, it behaves as if the fiber Ethernet access link connects your routers directly. In terms of IP routing, router performs the same steps to process IP packets as with other type of one links. The only difference is that the IP packets are encapsulated into Ethernet frames. This is the end of this video. Thank you very much for watching.